Hello there. Uh, yeah, I forgot to uh, record a little bit in the Megplay. But, I mean, it, this is the Longbow uh, 7 Victor, and hello again, welcome back to another chassis video here of the Longbow. Probably the last one, I believe. I, I don't think there are any other variants I can very readily build. Uh, I will have a double check at the record sheet, see what can and can't be built out of those, but... Yeah, the, the Seven Victor isn't anything specific narrative-wise. Uh, this is one that does pack quite a punch in the energy department, though. So if you're one of those assault mech players who prefers to get up close and poisonal with, uh, ha without having to worry too much about, you know, arm-mounted weapons, this is actually a really good choice here. As you can see, the default loadout on this is a pair of LRM20s, keeping with the longbows kind of theme but it has a whopping six energy hardpoints, and they are all mounted around the side torsos or the center torso, meaning that you've got an assault mech that can weather the storm and not have to worry too much about the arms being blown off, which, let's admit it, with the longbow, the arms are fairly easy to target. So you end up with a machine that, with the right tweaking, I imagine, with a custom build, the engine, all the rest of it, you probably get a half-decent speed with maximum armor and a pretty decent energy loadout, if that's your thing. Uh, the energy mounts are kind of mounted in a ring kind of setup around the sort of CT area, so some of them are high amounts, some of them are mid, but they're not too low down, so you don't have to worry about issues where you're going to be clipping the ground or any of the uh, nearby terrain if you're trying to uh, do peak and shooting, that kind of thing. The default loadout is pretty decent, five medium pulse lasers and an ER large laser backed by the two LRM20s, both with Artemis fire control. Um, overall, not bad. Skilled out, it's also very, very effective. Default comes with an XL engine, which I know for a lot of people does make the sphincter pucker. I, I totally get it with the XL thing. Mentioned it many a time before here on the channel, and uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those uh, big risk kind of elements. Ammunition by default for the LRMs is pretty generous, which again, tonnage-wise, if you were to probably swap these out, I imagine a lot of people probably would prefer to run a longbow with things like MRMs, because when you want to get into a brawl, MRMs are going to be able to pump out a bit more damage a lot more quickly, and not have to worry about things like, you know, um, limitations with regards to minimum range, that kind of thing. So, yeah, you, you do have uh, quite a few options, I think, and this might be one of the best in terms of its potential as a custom platform, let's say. In Universa, I couldn't really find a lot of information about exactly why this machine came about. It basically just seems to be a case that newer tech was available, uh, and um, yeah, they went with it. It still has the 7 designation, which means it's one of the ones that came about based on the original model that had the twin LRM5s and two LRM20s. So, yeah, this is, um, this is basically just a kind of up tech of it. The V designation doesn't really ring a bell with me about any particular faction or group. It could be uh, built for a specific uh, unit, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Um, but yeah, it is uh, it is pretty decent. Artwork-wise, I imagine this thing would probably look like the TRO 3051, yeah, probably. 3053, something like that. Well, I forget. Or 3058. It was whatever one that was introduced and had that weird like bubble cockpit design. And, um, like, yeah, it was all kind of, like, smooth lines and stuff. It was very different from the original sort of anime sort of uh, artwork that it was originally based on. Obviously, um, nowadays, there's, we've got this hybrid kind of artwork that is very evocative, the original anime, with some, a uh, bit, a uh, bit more of a kind of, uh, battle tech kind of update, especially with Catalyst going back to it these days and doing a bit more of their own kind of thing with it. Uh, armor-wise, so yeah, I thought this was quite good. Honestly, in this match, I thought I was dead. I walked over here thinking, oh, I'll help this guy, because there's only a couple of, like, lighter mechs, so if I can get some hits with the LRMs, like, you know, I can punch holes and medium pulses will probably help, but then I realized, oh, there are three fast movers down there, and I looked in the mini-map and realized, oh, the rest of the team have pushed over this side of the map. Uh, this is bad. I honestly thought I was, I was just going to get swarmed by the three uh, fast movers that are attacking that poor guy over there. Um, so I thought I'll just start moving toward them and hope for the best. I was exceedingly lucky uh, that that is exactly what happened. Is that, is that the the fast movers just left me alone uh, for the most part. I, I keep getting hit in the I get hit in the back occasionally, and it's the guy in the cicada uh, who uh, he's got ECM, so he thinks he's invisible, but uh, he he just keeps he just keeps like sort of love tapping. Uh, he doesn't really go in for the fight. I think, honestly, if he'd gone in, he, he probably would have had a big advantage. 
Uh, but for some reason he just decides not to and yeah, just occasionally just sort of runs up and does little bits of damage here and there. Goes through the rear armor, but yeah, it's it's not enough to really hurt me that badly. And then there's yeah, oh that's right, there's an assault mech on the wall. I do I don't like this new version of HPG, honestly. I preferred the older one. Um, as as bad as it was, as I know a lot of people really d detested the whole, you know, oh everyone just goes under underneath kind of gameplay. I did kind of like that. This new one is it's so it's so weird. It it doesn't look like any uh, HPG station I've ever seen described as well in Paltech. It's so random. It's just this bizarre collection of just grey metallic things. It looks a bit like the the trench from the Death Star. For some reason, just arrayed into a pattern that it just doesn't look like any kind of facility you'd ever Target see. Uh, it, it's it's really it's really fucking weird. I, I'm not a fan of it personally. It, it's not a map that I, that I like to to pick. Um, yeah, it's not really not really a lot else to say about it. I kind of hate it when there's not much to talk about with a, with a specific build because usually there's there's some interesting quirk in the universe or something like that. But sadly. Yeah, as, as far as the last of these sort of official what's in MWO kind of gameplay videos go, there's not really a lot. I think when the longbow is available for sea builds, which it might be by now, I'm not quite sure, I'll have to double check, uh, there might be another variant because I, I don't, I didn't get like the big pack that had all the things, I got the base one, and they tend to now hide variants, official variants, in the, the different tiers of the pack to try and get you to spend maximum amount of cash on it, which yeah, it kind of pisses me off, especially when sometimes they hide very specific uh, models, ones that ones that they know people will want within the higher tier packs to try and gouge you for a bit more cash. Um, so it's always a bit annoying, that one. Uh, rather than making it a case that if you just want to support them by spending a bit more money and get like the hero version or, or like a nice paint scheme, instead they decide to, you know, oh, we'll lock off certain content unless you pay us an extra like $10 or $15 or whatever. Yeah, not a fan of that particular kind of approach, to be honest. But uh, yeah, that was around. Oh yeah, and, and they took all my premium time off me. I had, I had hundreds of days active and now they've gone after that last update with the bull shark. So, oh well, there we go. Well, thanks for watching. As always, have a good one all and thanks for listening. Bye!